shouldn't actually do what I was doing, but um, just push from the bottom. And that piece will pop off. Okay. Hey guys, how you doing? This is Tom from Hobby King. I'm bringing you a quick tip video on how to strengthen foam planes. Um, there's quite a few ways of doing this. Most people use typical, you know, carbon rod and stuff like that. This is a bit of a throwback. I know a lot of people are sort of growing up in the foamy industry, as did I, um, and uh, you're seeing a lot of EPS, EPO is coming out a lot more now, um, EPP. So there's a lot of really nice foam products out there, but uh, sometimes you want to strengthen them up for either higher speed flying or you know just make them look cool with color. So um, some of the easier ways to do that is to use covering film. Right, here's a roll of covering film right here. Now this is definitely a throwback. This is uh, you know from the old balsa build-up days. So we're kind of taking some old school technology and mixing it in with some of the new stuff. Now if you take the park jet here, this is an EPO park flyer. This thing is strong enough to begin with. You have no need to cover it to try to take some flex out of the wing. So I would really only cover this if I was going for color. Now here's my park jet. This is after, uh, keep in mind, no motor. Right, it's a full sloper. Uh, I'll be doing a video on this guy actually pretty soon. But um, so a full slope version glider, and uh, I really only colored this because I wanted it to look as cool as possible. If you can tell in the video, it's got some wrinkles. It's got a few issues here and there. This is from a few months of going and combating with a bunch of other much bigger, heavier planes and kind of just hitting each other in the sky. So um, the only downside to covering foam planes is it's a little bit higher maintenance. you got to continue to heat it down and, and, uh, and, and kind of tack it back down to the foam and shrink it. So you need to have a couple specialty tools. There's also a couple shortfalls. You want to be very careful when you're doing this. So do not just go ahead and buy a bunch of covering film and start covering every foam plane you have until you actually look into what kind of foam you're putting it on. Make sure you have the proper tools. You need a full covering iron it's a good idea to have a uh, adjustable temperature heat gun um, and all of this is very important that you maintain proper temperature different types of foam melt at different standards different temperatures so um, as long as you're very careful about the temperature you will be just fine but keep in mind if you're just covering it for looks you're actually giving yourself a little bit more maintenance in the end because with enough flex and banging around the stuff does kind of loosen up so um, I hope you enjoyed the video I'm gonna go over all the basics on how to do this properly and uh, you know uh, benefit versus uh, the negatives and there there are quite a few negatives but there are a lot of really good ways to do this so I hope you enjoy the video okay guys so here I am at the uh, the workbench and I'm gonna start uh, showing you guys how to cover uh, foam so what I have is I'm actually gonna be covering a wing that I made myself this right here is just a, a slope soar wing that I'm actually gonna build up and uh, I cut this out of block foam, sheet foam you can buy from a hardware department for $5 for a massive amount of foam. It's very, very inexpensive. It's EPS, so it has very um, low temperature threshold. It will melt very easily. Um, and that's the thing I really want to get through to you is be very careful with this because all foam melts and it just depends on what temperature it melts at. This is absolute garbage foam. It's about the cheapest thing you can buy. It's about the easiest you can hotwire. Uh, by the way, if you are interested in learning how to hotwire, cut your own foam cores, and, and just build your own foam planes, um, thumbs up and, and leave something in the comments and let me know and I can do a tip video on how to build your own hotwire bow and how to go through uh, templating and cutting these things. But uh, back to the original project, what you want to do is you want to have some scrap foam or an area of your plane that does not matter to you, like inside of the canopy or something like that. And you need to check the temperature that it, uh, it will melt at because certain covering films uh, will actually tack down at a higher temperature than your foam will melt. Um, so you want to be very careful with that. It's, uh, it's really easy to melt through your foam. Now I know for a fact, since I did a little bit of testing, I've got my, my iron right here and it's set to about 250 degrees. So and I checked it with my digital thermometer. I picked these up from Hobby King for almost nothing. Really handy to have. Um, and what you want to do is you actually just want to press it down on your scrap and make sure after the heat transfers all the way through it that you're not actually leaving any any significant marks you're not changing the surface in any way and that way you know that you're within a safe temperature for that foam now the next thing you want to do is you want to take some of your scrap um, covering and you want to actually put that down on it and press it down with the iron and it's the heat of the iron that actually gets the adhesive on the backing to stick so that right there, stuck down, no melting, and 
it's it's kind of odd that you actually immediately notice less flex in that area because that's just it's a skin it's tensioning the entire top surface so that is perfect right that's that's nice because the temperature and the adhesive was not all that high not high enough that it would melt the foam so this is a good combination so um, that's step one do not melt your foam be very careful check your temperature on your iron very carefully right so I'm here with my uh, my foam core you can see this bend is actually a flat piece of uh, ribbon carbon and I laid that in there standing up and down that helps stiffen the whole structure before we actually cover it. Um, I've got a pre-cut piece of covering and what you have to do is you have to actually peel the backing off so you see there is a clear side and there is the covering itself. So this stuff develops some static when you pull this off but uh, Luckily, the adhesive has not really taken yet because it has no heat on it. So you got to kind of work with it a little bit. There we go. And what I'm going to do is just lay it down. Okay. So, about like that. Now, the whole secret to this stuff is it sticks to itself better than almost anything. So I've got the center line of the wing here, and I want to make sure that I have probably somewhere around half an inch. You could go to as low as a quarter of an inch, but the more you have overlapping, the better off you are. So as long as you have a little bit of overlap, you're fine. So I've got everything covered up, and I'm gonna go ahead and just tack it down first. And I like doing this from the center, sort of outwards. You can actually see the adhesive through it, because this is a transparent covering film. Now it's difficult but you can kind of work outwards while you're tacking it because you don't want to develop any huge wrinkles. You know this stuff has a lot of shrink to it but the last thing you want to do is really have to rely on that extra shrinking to get any wrinkles out. There will be some, there's no doubt. You're, you're gonna have some but you kind of want to pull it tight as you go, okay? And since this is a very low density foam, I'm trying not to stay in one spot too long. And I'm sort of trying to go outwards just to get those wrinkles pushed out. Okay, so I've actually got a pretty good tack, tack down on here. And uh, what I'll do from here is I'll actually take a blade and just kind of kind of trim this so I have a little bit of overlap because what I do want is I want it to actually lap underneath so then when I do the bottom side, it'll actually have something to grab. Okay, so I'll go ahead and cut this out. Precision doesn't matter too much here as far as how much overlap you have. I'm just going to do this quickly. If since I'm since I'm dealing with transparency, um, realistically you'd probably want to make sure this is looking pretty good, pretty clean, because if I put transparent on the other side, obviously it'll show darker when it's lapped over two areas. Now this is tricky area where you actually have a slight negative right here. So what I'm actually going to do is just add that seam split it like that so it can easily contour that and uh, also at the corner basically do the same thing I'll just cut out a little block here right. and from here kind of just work your way down
and uh, if you've never worked with this stuff before, once you actually heat it up, it, it tacks down really well. It's a very aggressive adhesive. Right. Okay, so you basically go like that throughout the top and bottom of the wing, and I'll show you what it looks like when it's all done. Alright guys, so here's my wing panel. Half of it is covered, half of it is not. Um, you can see, nice, nice and glossy, it's nice and smooth. Um, it tacked down really good, and it also is significantly stronger and stiffer. This is going to be able to take a lot more of a beating than this side. This side, chunks of foam are going to come off if you hit anything. This is going to keep it together. So um, it's a good technique. It's not for everyone, and it's not for every plane, but there are certain circumstances that this works very, very well. Again, watch your temperature. Now, a couple final notes is, um, as far as foam goes, EPS, you got to be very careful with temperature. EPO is actually kind of the best of them all for covering, but it's also the one that needs it the least because it's a very, very dense, strong foam to begin with. But um, EPO is very easy to work with because it can deal with high temperatures and it also tacks down uh, very well. Now, the wild card in this scenario is EPP. Now, EPP is an amazing foam, but the majority of it is um, hot wire cut, so it leaves it with sort of this rougher surface. Um, not to mention the fact that EPP, just about nothing sticks to it anyway. Um, if you ever try taping to it, you have to have some pretty crazy tape that will actually stick to this stuff. So what people do to combat that if they're trying to cover it is um, take spray adhesive and actually just lightly mist it. Let it tack up. You want to be able to actually feel it on the surface. So mist it with spray adhesive, let that dry for a couple minutes, and then go ahead and cover it just like I showed you on this wing. Um, that system actually works very well and a lot of combat wings will actually do that. So um, I hope you guys enjoyed the video and uh, give it a shot. Go, uh, go see what you can do, how you can beef things up and, uh, and get some uh, aggressive flying in. Alright guys, thanks for watching.